Ty Cobb was not a bad apple in the way that we're gonna, we're gonna do in this podcast about, but it made me think about at the time, you know, this is a guy who would go into the stands and fight with the fans and stuff like that. But we're, we're now that, th- that would classify that would classify him as a bad apple for this setting. Because I think when we're talking about bad apples, we're not talking about your malcontents on the field and in the dugout. We're talking about the guys that actually did bad stuff, you know, from the Black Sox to some other, to Pete Rose, to some other names. We're going to go through, you know, some of the worst guys, you know, the worst people that were ever in Major League Baseball. And we are going to talk about some guys, you know, even guys like, you know, that have done some stuff recently that are in the news, including Wander Franco. We're going to go over that stuff. Because, I mean, I think that's one of the hardest part is what do you even discuss when you get into a podcast like this? Because we don't want to glorify this behavior and essentially have a podcast be like, look at all these crazy, interesting things these guys did. Wow. And I, I tried to like, when I'm like, you know, so we came up with the idea of, okay, there's some interesting guys and we, you mentioned a couple of them. Um, and then you get to the sex offenders and like, God, I, like you said, I, I don't really want to get too right, deeply right, right, into like, that. There's nothing I can really say about right, that. Right, like, 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 I don't really want to <clears> talk <throat> about Jose Reyes and what he did because we don't want to talk about him at all because of what he did. And, and the list that we've got, and there's not that many because because there's the point was that there's twenty thousand, but we could talk about a lot of bad apples that did things after their careers. But we're going to talk but, about but them while they were these players. Were, these were all guys that while they were players, and we're going to really not spend that much time on the Black Sox because literally everybody has discussed them, and everybody knows about them, and their badness is debated. And what they did in the context of this list doesn't approach basically what any of these other guys did. Well, and there, But there will be some guys that were gamblers, and right, obviously but, they were the poster children for yes. doing what you shouldn't do, which is bet on baseball, which Pete Rose kind of perfected to a certain degree uh, later on. So, yeah, <clears throat> those guys, uh, Buck Weaver and Comiskey and Rothstein Burns, Kid Gleason, Happy Felsch, Eddie uh, Seacott, and, and we'll talk more about him in a moment, and Joe Jackson, you know, those guys got kicked out of baseball, and that's what makes that interesting, right? Because there are a lot of guys, as you said, that have done a lot worse things that didn't get kicked out of baseball forever. Right, exactly. And, and so I, I think, you know, so where do you start? Do you want to start with the gamblers? Do you want to start with the Black Sox and Eddie Seacott? I don't. I don't know that there's much more we can talk about, like you said, with with the with the Black Sox. Other than you know, like you said, there's some questions sometimes as to who did what. But even in the case of Joe Jackson and our friend Gary Gary Livicari, you know, is fairly convinced. Hey, Joe took the money, even if he didn't lay down and play badly, the fact that he took the money makes him guilty. And that's, I can appreciate that point of view. I don't necessarily impugn him the same way as some do, but I understand somebody that could feel that way. Well, what about the guy that basically was the Black Sox before the Black Sox and Hal Chase? Yeah, Prince Prince Hal, I'm not really sure. I guess he was so bad that they called him Prince Hal. Like He was such a heinous character in, in, during his playing career. Oh, like like gorgeous George the Red. Yeah, yeah, wrestler. just as an anti-hero kind, right. of, kind of a thing. And and, you know, Hal Chase, and, and the weird thing about Hal Chase, you look at his playing career, um, is that he was reputed to be a great fielder. And and I'm, I went back and looked at his, you know, his information and, and his his, his uh, baseball reference. There was nothing in there, at least from a defensive standpoint. Well, that I, made I me think, think he I, was I don't a know how much fielder. I can trust defensive statistics from, from that time. From that time, like, because re- really, how are any of us going to know other than just er- it's just straight. How many plays did he make? How many errors did it did he make? Right, right, right. And he he his career ended in 1920, so he was actually, like you said, pl- he was the Black Sox before the Black Sox because mm-hmm. there was nothing this guy wouldn't bet on Hal Chase. There was nothing. There was no game he wouldn't throw. There was no scheme he was uh, um, not open to. And he was almost like boldly going out there doing this in full view of everybody, going, "What are you going to do about it?" Until. Mountain Landis did something about came it. Came in and he was like, I'm going to go play in the outlaw leagues down in Mexico and avoid all that. So, yeah, yeah. You know, lying down and, and doing it sort of in a way that people knew that he did that kind of stuff. Um, right, right. Because I'm sure it would be the type of thing where he would be, there would be behind in the late in the game. He would come up and he's been raking all day and he just takes three week swings and strikes out. And everybody knows I didn't even try there. I guess it's Babe Ruth who selected Hal Chase as his first baseman for his all-time baseball team. Um, so that gives you a little, you know, insight as how to the kind of player he was. He was. Yeah. Um, and but he also was, you know, 
the, the, the guy that was the fastest guy to bet money uh, against his own team. Ooh. And so there, there it is, right? That, that's the line that Pete Rose claims he never to crossed. have never. Let's talk about him, too, in, right. in all this way. He, he claimed to never bet against the Reds. Um, but he did bet in games that the Reds played. I assume the Reds to win. Right. Um, I, but the idea that he could do things outside of a game with the Reds if he bet on other teams is compromising, right? Because if if you're going to bet on another and you have information or you're lining up your team in a way so that you can win a bet for because the Tigers are playing somebody or, or whoever it would be that you might not want your best pitcher to pitch in that game four days from now, well, you're not betting against your own team, but you're lo- using your knowledge uh, to right. take advantage of what's exactly. going on. So, uh, and, and, and Pete Rose, you know, everybody always says with Pete Rose that he could have been reinstated had he just apologized. Right, if you'd ever been willing to sort of take responsibility. I'm sorry, I, I, I didn't bet against the Reds, but I, I shouldn't have done this. But he was just never willing to do even never, that. Never. He was he was always somebody that had to be in control and be essentially like, no, I didn't do any of the bad stuff. I just gambled, which why can't I do that? And then, of course, there was the whole thing about in, later in life, the 15-year-old girl from Ohio or, that he claimed that he didn't have a sexual relationship until she was over 16 and he ended up being with her for he I think he, he ended up for uh, being with her for years after that um, and he was 32 and she was 15 when she met him right right Oof. all I'll say about that is uh, the fact that he might have ended up having a relationship with the teenager he groomed doesn't exactly speak much better about him and if the idea is that well it wasn't she wasn't 15 he waited until she was 16 again this is literally a teenager half his age no part of that story will ever reflect well on the man pete rose and and actually i was wrong because it says i i, I read this um piece even though rose owned up to it and said he only bet on games the reds played in while he was managing so wait a second. Now it doesn't say this doesn't say that he bet on them to win, right? You know, which you know, then you it's, it's question. So he's I, I don't I don't think he has a chance to get into the hall. No, thing. he'll go in after he's dead. I, I I'm not even that'll sure. Be, that, I'm not even sure that's going to happen. Punishment. It'll happen after he's dead. That'll be the punishment that he never gets to be. They will a, not. They will not give him the satisfaction. Right, that exactly. much is for sure. But I I am, I I am doubtful that he'll get get in there at all. Um. So <laughs> Eddie Sakote. Uh, of the Black Sox, he, you know, was really mad about not getting the, you know, money that he felt that he was owed to him. Mm-hmm. Um, and so while he wasn't necessarily the ringleader, he was sort of the front man um, and, and was the guy that hit the first player in the 1919 World Series to show that the fix was on. Now, why was he the only one to get the lifetime ban? Well, he wasn't the only one. Well, he was the only member of the eight. No, they all they all were kicked out for no, life. No, no, he was the only one that were banned for life. Oh, really? I, yeah. Okay, I'm 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 a little surprised at that because I always thought that. Well, Joe Jackson never was allowed back in the game. Well, so. I, I mean, I just I'm just going off of our notes here yeah, that yeah. that he was banned for life. He was banned for life, but the, I think the other guys were banned for life too. They uh, were all banned. Uh, for yeah, life. I'm just saying our, our notes say that you know we realize that he is the only member of the eight that were banned for life. Yeah, I, I, I'm I'm 100% sure that Joe right. Jackson was banned for life as well, and I think the other guys were too. Um, and, and, and they weren't all players. Remember, some of these guys, right. Rothstein wasn't a player. Um, Comiskey was a, an owner. You know, right. So, so that, that might be a, a little bit different there. Um, and so we're talking about gambling in baseball, and we can also talk about the last 30-game winner in Major League Baseball, mm-hmm. which I would think most baseball fans are aware of that. I mean, it happened – Way before you were born, and if I had, if you didn't do this, would you have known Denny McLean was the last guy to win thirty games, or would you not really register uh, that? I, I no, I would not have known he was the last guy to win thirty games because I think that was like really one of the only things that he really did. Yeah, he won back to back Cy Youngs. Mm-hmm. Okay, so there were two years, right? Two when years. Those two years, though, <laughs> and then they were amazing years. Uh, and he was actually a little better the year after he won thirty one in nineteen sixty nine uh, when he won the Cy Young. So. But Denny McLean was an inveterate gambler uh, and got into all kinds of trouble. <coughs> Excuse me. He, right, right, right. So he got into tons and tons of trouble because he was betting while he was hurt mostly. That was mostly when it crapped up. But then he was also having making a lot of money and, you know, his partners were throwing around big figures. And eventually he got involved with the mob. 
And that was probably when baseball was like, okay, wait a second. This is getting a little too big for us. And if you go back to that time, uh, a little bit after that in the 70s, um, you had guys like Willie Mays and, and Joe Lewis who had to give up their association with boxing. Really, I'm trying to think of another player that did that besides Mays that gave up their association with baseball because they wanted to go work in Vegas mm-hmm. as greeters at hotels to greet guests that come in and, and, and whatnot. So uh, I, I just think that, you know, Baseball and gambling, it was particularly sensitive at that time, obviously, when they found out what Danny McLean was doing. You know? it, right, exactly. Because he was he was associating with them and seen out with them. And he was also really good. So he was also playing golf and hustling people for money. And he was he even apparently flew a, a felon out of the country for a fee. So the guy was pretty much willing to do anything if it was going to make him a buck. But eventually it caught up with him because he got indicted. I don't think after while he was a player, he got indicted after the fact. Right. But so for actions he was taking part in while he was still a player. Right. After his second Cy Young, Sports Illustrated wrote an article that revealed him to be a degenerate gambler, covering his gambling losses by running a bookmaking operation with the mafia, <laughs> basically part of it. And, and 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 to this day, I still can't believe that that like happened and they didn't immediately throw him out. Right. He was part of the team that was indicted along with John Gotti jr just think about that <laughs> but um, and, and but unlike pete rose he's in good standing with major league baseball it, bowie kuhn suspended him he was the commissioner at the time um and you know he he got exonerated um because kuhn said that oh he, he was fooled and actually he was okay to stay in he, i don't know how he, he worked what, that out especially because it wasn't like he didn't get punished for it i mean it wasn't like pete rose ever went to jail for any of these things denny mclean was convicted and received 23 years in prison he just only ended up spending three there because because of a technicality, and then the federal government dropped the case. But he got his li- he got his life in order after that. But I mean, that's kind of wild to think of that a guy that went through that journey is still in good standing with Major League Baseball, and Pete Rose isn't in comparison. No, no, and and Denny McLean, you know, had a, a short um, time in the sun where he was on the '68 champion Tigers. Uh, unfortunately for him in that World Series and that they won uh, in 1968, Mickey Lolich won the three games, and Denny McLean is sort of like an afterthought. Right. He didn't pitch in that World Series in the way, and he won the Cy Young the next year. So uh, just a really interesting character, um, and 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 crazy that it got that far at a time when you would have thought it would have been shut down so quickly. Mm-hmm. So, um, and then we can get to some, some guys. Now we get to some of the more, I, I think these are more of the wilder stories where it's just like, these were, <clears throat> these were actions that were kind of taken place right towards the end of their career. In some cases, we have a guy like Lenny Dykstra who got into a ton of trouble after his playing career too. It really, it, it really hurts me as a Met fan, right? That Lenny Dykstra turned out to be this sort of wacky, uh, unhinged person. And, and I, and I feel like they're, you know, without, Making a joke of it, I, I I worry about his you know. I mean, he got condition. He was arrested for drunk driving in '91 while he was playing, and then again while he was playing for running a scam business for scamming people out of like hundreds of thousands. Yeah, of he was running like investment clubs and stuff right, like that, right. and take up taking people's money, and he had like no idea what he right, was he got, doing. He got he got he got he got arrested for grand theft larceny. That's not that's not something that happens by accident, people. And yet, I think he's better off today. I think his son is uh, trying to become a major league baseball player, but you always felt that. That nails was, you know, kind of a guy. Kind of wild, a little yeah, too wild. a little while, even when he was playing, but you didn't have any idea that it was going to end up being what it was later on. And then we got a guy. Now, this to me, this was a wilder story because it happened in his essentially at the end of his final season. So it just sort of happened and then he vanished. But Ugeth Urbina. Do you remember him? I remember him as a pitcher. I did not Ugi remember Urbina, him right, literally called? hunting people down in Venezuela. Hunting people. And, and he basically killed uh, somebody with a machete and poured gasoline on them. Yeah, he was un- he's now under arrest and in jail under an attempted murder charge. And that was at the that was in 2005 right at the end of his final season. And you know, had had no idea any of that was going on. I, I remember him as most- I remember hearing the story at the time because it was such an unbelievable story. I mean, you would have never expected in a million years that all of a sudden this was going and on. And I think like most of us if you would have, you know, this guy had two seasons of 40 saves. I remember him being particularly good for the Expos, I think, or is that is that I think yeah, before, yes. before they moved to Washington, um uh, he was like their closer, a really good closer uh, for the 
them. Like I said, the 40, 40 uh, saves for a couple of years. Um, but I, I had no idea that his career ended that way. No, no. And then we have Ben Chapman, who, if I had to guess, was John Rocker's idol growing up. <laughs> well said. Because he, he gained a reputation, Mr. Chapman, for being a virulent racist, anti-Semite, going as far to give it. Now, this was a man playing in the 1930s. So just think about that. This is 1930s in New York City. He's in the outfield giving Nazi salutes and hurling epithets at Jewish fans in Yankee Stadium. I, I, I'm still, I still can't believe, I'm trying to picture this going on. And, 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 and what were the other players doing? Right, and then he was a player manager for the Phillies, and he started to try and harass new Brooklyn Dodgers star Jackie Robinson. Of course, that backfired as it threw all the por- support by Robinson to the point that Chapman had to f- was forced to take a picture and publicly apologize for Robinson, which could, I can only imagine for a man like him was probably the single right, worst moment right. of his life. Right, right. And I, I had no knowledge of Ben Chapman, um, um, and, and he had a better playing career when I looked at it going, wow, this guy was pretty good way back then but I mean what a what a awful character right and following him up because there was obviously not only going to be one very very racist player back in the 1930s and 40s not to say that there weren't more than these because there definitely were but there was also Frank Pinky Higgins 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 Pinky uh Higgins yeah he did not like his nickname Pinky so that's why we will call him by that. Uh, he was nobody. Nobody was more against no player or manager or player manager was more against the integration of baseball than him, and he was one of the biggest reasons why the Red Sox de- were the last team last to field team. a black player. Yeah, yeah. Jackie Robinson broke the color barrier in 1947. The Red Sox didn't have a black player until 1959. Yeah. Pinky was also a killer as he killed somebody dri- driving in Louisiana in 1968. I don't think he was the manager anymore at this point, but he was then sent to, sentenced to prison for four years and died one day after being granted an early release. Yeah, so he, he is one of the, the worst guys you know out there. And again, the fact that people did this in broad daylight, is right. the, I think, is what amazes me the most. Um, and, and another guy that's like that is Ralph Schwamm. Um, and he, he, before he even got to the major leagues, he was in trouble. He was nicknamed Blackie because he idolized the, bla- the bad guys in, in the old Western movies who dressed all in black. Never a great sign. So uh, he was a big guy, um, and he struck an officer, got t- kicked out of the, the Navy, uh, and then he, after his career, or after the 1948 season, excuse me, he was a player, mm-hmm. he murdered a doctor. To pay off mob debts. <laughs> and then he was sentenced to life in prison, though he was eventually released, you know, 12 years later in 1960. So, so the important thing is, is that, 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 that remember is that this happened while he was a player, which always, right. always... And, and this is another guy that this happened to a player then Julio Machado. Now this was a story that despite taking place in my life that I had not heard. You do, so you don't remember Julio Machado. No. I remember him pitching for the Mets. Right. He was a Mets pitcher and he was like a, a an up and coming reliever, right? Yeah. He was, he was, I, I remember what I remember of him before I looked into this right. article was like, he had good stuff, threw hard, and you know, he's a guy you were kind of like, wow, maybe he's going to be a good a good pitcher for us. But then um, he his career came to a screeching halt in 1992 uh, when he was convicted of shooting and killing a 23-year-old following a car accident. And that he was traveling, and uh, that they would the, the in other Venezuela. in Venezuela, and then he went on the run and was captured and sent to twelve years in prison in nineteen ninety six. So I guess that would mean he's out now. Well, his, I'm pretty sure his contract was void, <laughs> but he's not making a comeback. That's for sure. So yeah, that that's just and, in, and that's just those are some of the more wild things that have happened while guys have been active players in the major leagues. And then there are some other gentlemen out there that. We're, we're sort of just going to name and shame. I don't think we're going to get into the specifics of what they did because what they did is pretty heinous and we don't want to glorify it at all. But we also feel like not mentioning these names and not sort of calling them out as these guys did bad things, specifically bad sexual things to people and oftentimes people people that were in positions of power or not in positions of power in comparison to them. And and, and the, the guy who, who's first here is, is a guy you don't remember watching play. And I remember because his name was Milton Bradley. And of course... I remember if, watching him play. If you played any you know board games, Milton... It was weird that there was a baseball player named the name of the board game company. Um, and Milton Bradley was... 
you know, well, obviously we'll talk about, you know, we're not going to talk too much about his the, the sexual aspects of what it is. And he's got custody of his kids now. He seemed to, seemed to have turned his life around after some really right. bad. But he was a wacko, like, during his playing right. career on the field. Like, he was a volatile guy that right. you were worried about. And that's why in 2013 he was convicted on nine counts of domestic abuse, including battery and assault with a deadly weapon. I, I hope... That, you know, abuse is terrible. It's never can be condoned. And all I can hope is that with sole custody of a kid that the man has turned his life around and the demons that plagued him no longer do because that's a terrible situation, what happened there. The other guys will, will skip because I, I can't really talk about Mel Hall because this guy, if you want one of the... He played for the Cubs. He played, for, I think, for the Yankees. Um, and, and during his playing career, he did some horrible stuff that, that is unbelievable. Um, and, and he, he was a, not a great player. And, and then he basically, you know, just went off the rails completely. Right, right. Kids, very being with very, very young girls, as young as, uh, you know, under... During his playing during career. During his playing career. I don't want to go. And he, went, he received a 45-year prison sentence, which is exactly where he should be. So uh, you mentioned Jose Reyes, and, you know, it's hard for Met fans, you know, to talk about, you know, his incident. Uh, but, you know, that's something that has to be mentioned, right? Right, because right. Jose it, Reyes. I he wasn't going to get in the Hall of Fame, Jose, but that did not help. Who was the relief help. pitcher that did the same thing for the Mets? Yeah, it's uh, 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 yes, Henry Mejia. Right, and then he got he got went the whole the whole no no well, no Mejia, that, Mejia was Mejia ster- the steroid, steroid guy. My bad, my bad. There was a Met relief pitcher who also beat his wife. Was it Familia? Yeah, right. It was that was tough. Those were tough. I hated rooting for them. Um, and, and I threw on here because he's still not pitching in the major leagues uh, from a bizarre incident that mm-hmm. has you know, been going on now for a couple of years. Trevor Bauer pitched in Japan last year, I think. Right, and he's trying to make his way back, but people do not want to touch him because yeah. of his actions, and that is the way it should be. Yeah, yeah. Um, you don't remember Luis Poloni, who played for the Yankees, but he he had an incident with a, a underage girl, uh, and, and, and that and, ended his career. Right, and I'm glad that even, so. but I'm glad that even back then, even uh, back then, well, in 1995, even then, it was that was still enough to get people. You could see how it had changed from Pete Rose in the room. The, the Rose's stuff came out after his career, not while he was a player. But you, you could even see it from when Mel Hall was running around in the 70s and 80s and people, you know, he was showing up at the ballpark with a 15-year-old and the reaction was amused curiosity. By the time we get to the 90s, Luis Polonia does that. He shows up, he gets escorted from the ballpark and removed from baseball. And that's how it should be. And so you're right to say that as we've gone forward, it's 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 it seems to be you know more severe as it should be that these guys. I, I remember Felipe Vasquez, who's also known as Felipe right, Riviera, he changed his name and maybe he changed his name because right. of what, what was right. going on. But you know he he served prison time. Right. He made back to back All Star teams in 2018 and 2019, and then at the end of the 2019 season, he was arrested for child pornography and for sexually assaulting a 13 year old girl. Convicted of 15 accounts and is now in prison. Right. And and that might be, I hate to say it, where Wander Franco um, is going to go because it, it looks bad. It's I knew it was bad when the Rays basically persona non grata him, like within days of the news coming out. That, this is like, he just got a giant contract right, from And him. now he is gone. And he does not like, exist. He's like Because that. he should be going to jail. Again, we don't. He hasn't been convicted of anything, but it, that's why I say it looks bad. Everything we know about this, everything we've heard, but until he is convicted and something happens, you know, you have to say, well, you know, it, it looks bad. That's all you can really say. I mean, you can't, you can't make a guy guilty before you have everything, you know, understood. If it walks like a duck, it talks it, it, like I, a duck. I, I, I'm going to call that duck a disgusting human being. It, it certainly looks that way. So, uh, and and it's really not surprising when you think about, you know, baseball players face the same pressures in, in, in life that a lot of people do. They have more resources. Right, right. And for some of these guys, they've basically grown up in an environment where they can do no wrong. They're essentially gods, especially earlier on when baseball players and athletes were really treated with such a degree of deference and you didn't have the ability to report on things. You didn't have cameras taking These guys could get away with everywhere. monstrous behavior at a time. And I'm glad to see that as we've progressed, there's less and less tolerance for these sorts of behaviors. You know, gambling is one thing, but when you get to some of these other acts, they have no, I mean, gambling has no place in baseball, but these other things have no place in a civil society. And so we, we, we shifted not to the bad apples, like on the field for doing 
bad things during games and being, you know, dirty right, that's, players. That's quaint and fun to discuss and, oh, it's a hard-nosed versus being. These are genuinely bad guys. Right, right. So, uh, and, you know, at, at a 20,000, you know, 23,000 people, you, 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 you know, not everybody's going to be good. Yeah, just <laughs> luckily, a few bad apples don't spoil the bunch. 